What's up everyone, Juan Valdez here and today I wanted to make this video going over six things you should be doing if you're running an online business. I have a good amount of things that I kind of want to go over and I have the notes right here. You're also going to see the screen share so you'll be able to see my screen and kind of see things as I'm going through it. I have a lot I want to cover so I'm just going to jump right into it. So these six things, I actually made a video on it before. I made a video on this book review by Robert Cialdini. It's called Influence. I usually have it around here but I don't know where it is right now. It's called Influence. It's one of the most powerful and most beneficial marketing books I've ever read and if you guys haven't already read it make sure you pick that up he went over these six key principles in psychology these psychological biases that pretty much make people make decisions right or they help people or influence people to make decisions that's a much better term for it. and I wanted to kind of go through all those things and how you guys should be implementing them and specifically for everyone that's drop shipping how you guys can actually implement these specific psychological biases into your business so make sure you guys stay till to the end now to kind of go over the first thing I kind of wrote here you need to be doing doing all these things if you really want to see results in your online business that's whether you're doing drop shipping affiliate marketing social media marketing anything you need to be doing these things because these are the psychological biases again that influence people onto making decisions so obviously you guys want people making decisions you guys want people buying your products and services so of course you want to make sure you have these things down I'll get right into it so one of the first triggers that Robert Cialdini talks about that's super important when it comes to you know the psychological biases is reciprocity for those of you guys that don't don't know what reciprocity is basically when somebody does something for you and that feeling you get well how you automatically want to do something back for them in return right for me whenever I've had anybody give me something for free or just do a favor for me for no reason just I personally always feel like you know I kind of have to give them something back in return right I have to see how I can provide value to them and really return that favor and that's reciprocity so one of the things you guys want to be doing in your business is seeing how you can provide the customer with free value and making them feel like they have no choice but to you know give back whether it be an email address whether it be actually buying your product or service you want to make sure that you're always doing that because giving for free to the customer is automatically going to put them in that state where again they want to you know give back to you whether it be you know participating with your brand or referring you to someone else all these different things can come from you giving and so you want to see how you can actually do that into your business and one of the easiest ways is there's actually two ways that I recommend for anyone that's drop shipping one of the ways is that you can do a BOGO offer with either a product or content and I'll show you guys what I mean by BOGO go off I mean buy one get one free so what you can do is when somebody comes in to buy a specific product what you can do is offer them an additional version of that product if not an, a different product for absolutely free and for those of you guys thinking like hey won't that cut into my margins well think about it do the math would you rather have a loss in whatever the product cost is for the product you're giving for free usually if you're getting giving a product for free it's the same product you know whatever kind of margin it is it does depend on the product obviously if you have like a super really high expensive product then you probably can't give the same version of it for free but you can always give a supplemental product for free right something that is congruent and something that goes along well with that product like an upsell or downsell product and usually those products have lower product costs right so is it worth making the full profit on your original product and taking a little loss on the product that you gave for free is it worth doing that or just not getting a sale at all right so you got to think about it you know now things are getting a lot more competitive in the e-commerce space so you have to find unique ways to provide value to your customers so that's one of the ways that you can do that again you can set up that offer it's pretty simple to do and you can not only do that with an actual product but you can also do that with content but before I go to that I want to make sure I cover this part you tossing in a free related product this could help drive repeat purchases and word of mouth meaning they could tell other people about your product and services and what it can also do is you can also use this strategy to introduce customers to new products that they otherwise may have not discovered so what you can do is throw in another product that you have to offer that you potentially want to try out and offer this product for free and then get feedback on the customer and figure out if it's a product that you want to actually add advertise and promote to other customers right so you can literally get free data from the actual customer finding out if it's actual product that they would get value from and so that's beneficial because then that can save you time from promoting a product that customers may not even be interested in so that's just a fun fact you can do the same thing with content as well you can see I have that written here you can offer either a free guide of other creative ways to use your product or service or a product benefits guide going over some of the key benefits of having your product or service for these PDFs you guys have probably already seen a lot of these online right if you look up maybe like kitchen 
kitchen supplies, right? You can find specific ways that you can use these kitchen supplies to make other products, right? Other cooking meals and things like that. And you can do the same thing. So it's really easy to get these made. It's not complicated. You can actually hire someone on Fiverr to make one of these guides for you. All you have to do is find an example guide that they can kind of go from. And then from there, they can make a similar guide for you for your specific product, right? And so what this does is obviously you giving the customer a free PDF guide, you know, now you're adding a lot more value to the customer. Now you're standing out compared to what everybody else is doing, which is trying to get them to buy their product with nothing else to go along with it. And this PDF or free content guide might cost you, I mean, let's say it costs you 50 to 100 bucks, right? That's a one-time fee that you can then reuse over and over and over again to consistently provide value to your customers that you paid for once. That's for reciprocity, how you guys can implement reciprocity into your business. The next part is the commitment and consistency. Now, the principle of commitment and consistency says that people will do almost anything to appear consistent in their words and actions, even to the extent of doing things that are basically irrational, right? And a good example that I like to use is honestly with myself, right? So me personally, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but your boy's been working on getting in shape, I got the guns and I've been working on getting a lot leaner. And I actually started talking about it on social media and to friends and families. And I, I committed to the fact that I wanted to be lean for the summer, right? So now that I, I've committed to that, now I honestly feel like I have to make sure I do everything, like eat clean, keep working out, do cardio, all these things to make sure that I actually get to my goal because I've already committed to wanting to be lean, right? So obviously now I don't want to go against what I've already committed towards because then I'll seem inconsistent and people hate seeming inconsistent. So this is why this is Hutch a huge bias. You know, as a business owner, if you can understand the psychology of buying and get customers to make small commitments to your brand, like signing up for your email newsletter, they're more likely to eventually purchase from you and also potentially become repeat buyers. There's a few reasons for that and I'll kind of go over that. So one of the ways you can do that or implement the commitment and consistency bias into your business is by trying to provide value to your customer with either free content or like a coupon simply in exchange for their email. Now this may sound like something very simple and easy to do, but in reality, like a lot of people don't do this correctly, right? You wanna really see like what offers can you put into place to actually get a customer's email. And it's super simple, right? So you can use that same PDF guide that we talked about earlier. You can multi-purpose it. Now you can offer a free PDF guide if they simply enter in their email, right? You can have it set up where like if they enter in the email, they'll automatically get the guide sent to them. And now you're providing value in exchange for their email. And that's super beneficial because once somebody has committed to already giving you their email, well, now they're a step closer to actually becoming a customer, right? Now that they see that you're giving them free value in their email, you're not just trying to sell them anything. Well, now next time they see your ad and they see an offer you have available, they're more likely to actually be committed to buy it because they've already committed to giving you an email, right? It's a small commitment, but small commitments can go a long way. And once they buy from you once, well, they've already committed to buying a product from you. So why not buy more products from you, right? So you want to make sure that you're focusing on this commitment and consistency bias because this is huge. Basically, the way that these biases are set up is like no one person works off of, you know, just one bias, right? Basically, we make decisions based on more than one of these biases working in place at one time. So our ultimate goal, at least in my business, is to have all these working as much as possible. And so you want to make sure you're trying to do all these things because again, like not everybody works off commitment and consistency. Some people might commit to some things, but they may be inconsistent people. That's just how they are. And so this bias might not work and this strategy might not work against them, but reciprocity might work, for example. So you want to make sure you're implementing all these. That's for both of those. Now for the next one, the next one is liking. One of the biggest things I learned in sales is if you can get someone to like you and trust you, they'll always buy from you. We're more likely to say yes to a request if we feel a connection to the person making it. And this is why brands hire celebrities to endorse their product because people will transfer their love for the celebrity to their product he or she is endorsing. What happens is that fans of these celebrities become then fans of the product. And so obviously for some of us that have, you know, smaller time businesses, we can't afford to pay celebrities to wear our products and services, but you can work with social media influencers to do it. And so in our time and day, social media influencers are like celebrities. And so that's one of the ways you guys can do it. Another way you guys can and apply this principle into your business is by telling a story, right? Having a story behind your brand, right? If there's one place that branding is essential for the psychology of selling, it's in triggering the principle of liking. And one of the ways that make people like you is by having a powerful story. And so usually what a lot of people do is they have a story 
right in their about us section in their store and it's basically a story that people can relate to right people can actually connect to and once you get someone to connect to your story it's a game changer because now the people aren't buying just your product they're buying into you into your story and so what i like to do is to look up other brands to see what their story is and how i can craft mine similar to theirs right if i don't have any ideas one of the best examples that i found is like the company mvmt watches some of you guys may have already heard about them but they basically right here you can see it's like not a long story it's two paragraphs and like actually, let's go on their website really quickly just so you guys can see it because they have even like right if you go to brand our story you can see right here their purpose of their story and their brand to dress with intent and live with purpose that's like their motto and these principles that i'm going through will help with brand building marketing and increasing your sales and conversions i guarantee you guys that and so you can see right here that again it's a simple story they have together it's nothing crazy and you guys can do the exact same thing this is a multi-million dollar company i think last year they did something over 10 million and i could be even lowballing them I got, they probably did more and so they've been crushing it because they're doing a lot of these things correctly and super well and so that's one of the websites that i you like to use as an example just to kind of go through and see their story now again if you guys don't want to be the face of your brand and your website not a big deal you can either get somebody else to be the face of it or just not have a face on it you know even though faces people don't don't really like faceless brands so you can find somebody else maybe a social media influencer or maybe somebody on fiverr that can represent your brand right now that's a whole other topic like that i would have to dive more into but you can do that as well and doing this is a great way to sum up your story and get people to like you another thing you can do is whatever it is that you're selling one way you can create a connection to your customers is to show your product on people they identify with and it's usually the people that are your ideal customers i might have misspelled that here but basically you want to have pictures and images or videos in your website of your product and service being used by your ideal customers so you can see that movement mvmt watches their ideal customers is like people from anywhere from age 18 to 25 and like you know modern and stylish people right so that's how they have like their ideal customers in all their product images and this is just a quick snapshot that i grabbed but you can see right here like the types of images they use you guys want to use the exact same things because now your ideal customer can envision themselves with the product and it's a lot easier for them to like your product and service if they can already start to envision themselves with and so that's that another thing you guys can do is the way that they upsell is absolutely incredible and amazing right because what they do is well they have two things that they do right first they show which products are other are popular among other shoppers so what they do is they display which other products customer frequently purchase in the same transaction and they also share which other products customers research during their buying process this is genius because what it does is when somebody is buying on their website well they're not seeing the other advertised or the other products in the bottom that Amazon is showing them as like another offer or them trying to sell them more products. They're seeing it as, oh, Amazon is looking out for me because now they know that if I came in to buy, let's say headphones, I'm probably gonna need batteries. So the fact that they have that available to me and easily for me to add that to my cart, that's a favor they just did. Now I'm more open to Amazon and now I like them even more because they did me that favor, right? They made it easier for me to remember that I'm gonna need another product along with the product that I came in to buy. And that's huge because you can do the same thing with your store and you can set up apps that also show you know frequently bought together or customers that bought this also bought this and that's super easy to do and so you want to make sure you implement that into your business as well now authority is the next one for those of you guys that don't know too much about authority basically people like following and buying from knowledgeable experts right this psychiatrist i don't need i don't need to have this part in there people like listening to people that are an authoritative figure so usually what happens is that we're hardwired to simply respond to authority or the appearance of authority now you guys may be thinking like how can I use this to sell well you basically want to try to become the expert in your niche or space and one of the ways you can do that is by being extremely helpful to your customers right you can help your customers make educated buying decisions and there's a few different ways you can do that you can make meeting your customers needs wants questions and challenges the foundation of your brand and one of the best ways to do that is by you know doing simple things like sending content emails explaining the benefits of your products right posting content explaining other ways that you can use your products on social media platforms and on your website these are all simple ways that you can become the authoritative figure into your space or niche right posting about different content about different products or related products or just things going on in your space that's an easy way to become the authoritative figure because now people know you as like that go-to resource or that go-to guy for whatever space or niche you're in and so the next one is social proof now what i like to do is personally 
having the customer receive an email after they get their product offering them a coupon either for 10 15 20 percent whatever the case may be it all depends but giving them a coupon in exchange for a product review now for me i'm willing to take the hit on whatever profit loss i get i lose on them actually using the coupon but review that i'm actually getting from that coupon that i'm sending the customer out is much more beneficial because with that same coupon what i then like to do is send out an email showing other customers that have been on the fence about products or things like that i have a customer that recently left a review from recently purchasing from us that's huge and then what i also like to do is to repurpose those reviews and repurpose that content for social media so then posting on our social media channels the customer reviews that we're getting and so that's what you guys can do to you know establish that social proof i'm telling you guys sending out coupons or sending out value to your customers you know in exchange for getting product reviews is going to be huge and a game changer because reviews people love seeing reviews i'm telling you guys this is why amazon does so well well because they have tons of reviews and their whole business runs on getting customer reviews so that's pretty much it when it comes to social proof now the last one is scarcity now a lot of you guys know about scarcity right you know about putting that little timer on your website saying like hey you have a certain amount of time to get this product or saying we only have actually that's urgency that's another one scarcity is saying like hey we only have 10 left of this product now when it comes down to scarcity you want to make sure you're doing scarcity the right way it's not enough to just say you only have 10 of this product right everybody can do that customers aren't buying it customers are smart and a lot of people underestimate how smart customers actually are and so what i like to do is have specific reasons as to why you're having the scarcity right i'm just gonna erase this one because this one's kind of the same i like to personally we do a lot more of the out of stock so we only have 10 left in stock and then what we like to do is after that number we actually wait a few days after you run a sale saying there's only a few left in stock and then we actually show on our website it's completely sold out so there's no more in stock and what that does is that it builds anticipation for when we relaunch the product and we actually do have more in stock now obviously as to whether you have you know you have it in stock or you don't you can kind of keep that to yourself but the fact that you're doing that gives that perception that hey you want to take advantage of the sale because if not you will miss out the other reasons that i like to use is like sometimes we may have seasonal products so we'll advertise like hey we only have 10 left because it's for this specific season and also i usually like to do limited product which is kind of the same limited product we like to use because sometimes we'll have a product where we don't advertise all the time and we'll just bring it out for a specific amount of time where they can take advantage of it and then if they don't they simply miss out and they can't really get access to it or get that offer again so scarcity is super useful and because if people have the option to put things off if they don't have any scarcity being used on them they will put things off trust me think about when when's the last time you were thinking about buying something and when you had the option to just put it off for another time you probably put it off unless you like really needed it really wanted it and so you want to make sure you're using scarcity now to kind of wrap this up again you want to make sure you try to implement as many of these as possible that's how you will get the best results out of using this now i was planning on making this video just for our p2p drop shipping accelerator students and the reason why is because this is a lot higher level you know strategy right there's not a lot of people talking about building authority and really focus on brand building and doing all these things right and so what i realize is obviously i want to help you guys out as well you guys have been following me for a little bit help you guys with your businesses as much as i can and see how i can provide value to you so i figured why not just put together for you guys here as well so this is actually going to be the full version for you guys as well and if you guys happen to be interested in learning more about e-commerce seeing other higher level strategies that we implement into our business that generates us six figures every single month consistently then you can check out the p2p drop shipping accelerator down below we have tons of students making their first sale who have never made a dollar online and people crushing over six figures a month you can check that out there's going to be a link down in the description you can check out the page and check it out it goes in full detail covering everything from store creation product research marketing the right way email marketing outsourcing and building a team and a whole lot more so make sure you check that out and if you guys picked up a thing or two from this video of course i'd appreciate if you dropped a like and if you have any questions about anything that i went over drop it in the comments below and if you haven't already, make sure you join the VFAM, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.